Um, my Acting One class is doing some political speeches. Um, I think it's an important project because they're looking at uh, really powerful speakers using really extraordinary words. Um, and I think the power that comes from that is really beneficial to any actor to explore. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it! I know not what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. With confidence in our armed forces and with our unbounding determination of our people, triumph is inevitable, so help us God. It is no coincidence that those countries of which I spoke of earlier, which had lower levels of inflation, also had lower levels of unemployment. This is no simple reform. It really is a revolution. Sex and race because they are easy and visible differences have been the primary ways of organizing human beings into superior and inferior groups and into the cheap labor in which this system still depends. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen or those earned. We are really talking about humanism. If it is I, as the chosen head of our nation and our people, then heartily welcome it and bid it Godspeed. It is important to me that everyone who has been hurt know that the sorrow I feel is genuine. Most importantly, my family, also my friends, my staff, my cabinet, Monica Lewinsky and her family. I have asked all for their forgiveness. But I believe to be forgiven, more than sorrow is required. I want to have a time to look for my children, to see how many of them I can find. Maybe I shall find them among the dead. Hear me, my chiefs, I am tired. My heart is sick and sad. From where the sun stands, I will fight no more. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the naval and air forces of the Japanese Empire. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. But friends, let us not be sad, but let us have courage in our hearts and strength in our arms. For let us understand that after all death comes resurrection, and that from this grave and the graves that surround us will rise the freedom of Ireland. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what America will do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. To me, Barack was still that guy who picked me up for our dates in a car so rusted out that I could actually see the pavement going by in a hole in the side wall of the passenger door. He's that guy whose prized possession was a coffee table that he dug out of the dumpster and whose only pair of decent shoes was half a size too small. Yet I love Brock, just the way he was. Nancy and I are both pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Perhaps you do not know the meaning of that offensive term, polecat. Do you not know that men are creatures of habit? Give them an inch and they'll steal the whole subdivision. And although it is true, as you say, the polls are only open once every four years. When men are once given the habit, who knows where it will end? 
The movie stars say they want to go to Iraq and serve as human shields. I say let them buy a one-way ticket and go. Let them shield the gang-ridden streets of Los Angeles or New York City. Let them shield the lives of the children of North Birmingham whose mothers lay them down to sleep on the floor each night to shelter them from stray bullets.